So today I just wanted to quickly sit down with you and I'm sitting right beside the window and it's snowing and if you're in England you know how much of a rare occurrence that is. But I just wanted to sit down and do a little bit of a different video to the normal videos I do. Less high production, just a normal sit down chat because I found that those high production videos with all that editing that I've been doing has been shutting down my creative process and it's been slowing down my uploads, which you may have noticed. And the thing I wanted to tell, talk to you about today and the secret I wanna to reveal to you is the thing that I think is the reason why I'm able to outperform my competitors, whether it's uh, in YouTube, in business, or at university, while still doing less effort to them and I think it's why I've been getting such good grades in my university course even though I've been running this YouTube channel and running my online business and doing other things like going to the gym maintaining a relationship whilst keeping up my daily practices like journaling once in the morning journaling once in the evening and meditating every single day for well over a year now and it's the idea of how you do anything is how you do everything. Now, I'm going to expand more on this in a way that I haven't revealed, because if you're one of my longtime subscribers, then you'll understand the idea of how you do anything is how you do everything and how powerful I believe this concept to be. If you're completely new to the idea of how you do anything is how you do everything, then I want you to click the link up there or it's up there and that's going to reveal to you a video, a step-by-step -step process that's going to reveal to you the how you do anything and how you do everything and how you can leverage this concept to excel in everything that you want to do in life. But the very quick summary of the concept is that how you do any activity is a very, very, very good indicator to how you do other activities in your life. So for example, how you treat your relationships are a very good indicator of how you treat all of the different activities in your life. And for example, how you treat your workouts in the gym are a very good indicator of how you do everything else in your life. I once saw this person and he's kind of like a local celebrity in this area and he's grown a huge online presence in my town and I was in the gym and he happened to walk in as well. Now I didn't say anything with him, I just wanted him just to get along with his workout but when I watched him work out it was unlike anything else that I'd ever seen inside of that gym. Most people go into the gym, they do a half assed workout, but he was some kind of beast, some kind of monster, and although he wasn't the biggest guy, I could tell that very soon he was going to take that position because he worked harder than everyone else, and it all boils down to the concept of how you do anything is how you do everything. Now, the reason this works is because the brain has a difficult time distinguishing between what task it's doing. The brain doesn't know the difference between working out at the gym or working on an assignment or in a relationship it can't your subconscious brain I'm talking about it doesn't understand really what's going on it's very very basic and it's very very deep inside of our brain I'm not talking about the complex complex part of our brain I'm talking about the very very deep animalistic part of our brain and because of that, it treats almost every single activity apart from the ones that are life or death with the very same amount of focus. It treats working on one project exactly the same as it treats on working on another thing. It can't distinguish the same which means that if you can practice getting good at focusing in one skill, then you can get good at focusing on another skill. And that is the main thing that I want to talk to you about, is when you're in a lecture or you're in a meeting or you're watching a YouTube video or you're reading a book, you should be practicing focusing. You see, most people, they read a book or they go to a lecture or they're in a business meeting for the book or the lecture or the business meeting. They're doing that and they're consuming that content or they're doing that thing, writing that assignment because they want to write that assignment. But in reality, when you do something, there's so much more than just you doing that activity. The most important thing is not the actual fact you're doing that activity, but it's how you're doing that activity. Because how you do that activity is a skill that you can learn and it will affect how you do all of the other activities in your life. Which means that you can practice focusing in one thing and it will benefit your life in different ways. So when I'm in a lecture, I will practice focusing, not because I think that the lecture is of vital importance to me and my life, but because I want to practice focusing so that I can get good at other things in life. And you see people that have meditated for a long time talk about this benefit. They've practiced for 10 minutes a day or 20 minutes a day focusing on their breath. And because they got so good at focusing on their breath, they are able to focus on other areas in their life better because how you practice one thing is how you practice other things. So the moral of the story is that 
everything is interlinked and I've been looking into quantum physics and it's scary how close what I'm telling you now is linked in quantum physics and that the unknown stuff that's going on in there in that crazy crazy field that's going on and it's all very linked and I've got a feeling that quantum physics has something to do with what I'm talking about I'm not 100% sure no one really knows what's going on but that's what I feel like but the basic point is how you do anything is how you do everything and you can practice your focus on whatever you're doing even when you're watching YouTube videos and that's going to start benefiting your life in other areas, which means that you can practice the important things in your life by practicing the non-important things in your life. You can get better at the important things in your life by practicing on the non-important things in your life. Now, this is the same concept that Ryan Holiday talks about when he talks about reframing every situation to make it a positive one. And the common example that's used here is when you're late for a bus, you reframe the situation and you stop yourself getting annoyed and you recognize that that situation is actually a an opportunity for you to practice your virtue of patience. And it's the same thing that I'm talking about here. You can flip around any situation to look for the underlying benefit that you can get from it, which actually means that in life, apart from grievances, I'm not going to get into that, but you can reframe any negative situation to make it a positive one. Just like when you're in a lecture, you can actually look for the underlying benefits of you presenting yourself with the opportunity of practicing your focus. So even if you're in something and you're in a, a lecture or a meeting that you think is boring and you're just waiting for the time to tick, instead of just letting your brain go, practice focus because every single thing you do in life, every single thing is an opportunity for you to practice for the other things in your life. Now, if you agree with me, then I just want you to go down in the comments and just leave a simple yes. If you don't agree with me, I want you to go down in the comments and leave a simple no. That's all you've got to do. And whilst you're on the way down there, you may as well give me a like for this video. My name's Andrew Kirby. Thank you for watching.